we have, oh, you know that, Ooh, no too far, maybe. Okay, we have a requirement for a D10 in this game. Or you can make a spinner and I'll show you how you make a spinner. Well, I'll show you the instructions for making a spinner in just a moment. So what we have is, I'm going to, so tonight's activity, tomorrow's activity, so at nine o'clock in the morning, London time, we'll be doing a live for seven to 18 year olds. And it's all placed around throwing a dice or spinning a spinner, coming up with numbers one to nine. And you can also dip, dip a hat, create 10, uh, nine cards, numbers one to nine and put them in a hat. I'll be demonstrating that in the morning as well. And that's um, ages seven to 18 at nine. And then at 10 o'clock, early years. And Leo's going to be demonstrating a bit of the early years activity just now because he won't be here at 10 in the morning. So I'm going to just share the live so that on, where's the live? The live has disappeared. He has disappeared. That is a bit frustrating, so I'm not going to worry about it. I will just go ahead and play the game. So I'm going to share the screen, show you the activity. Now it's in the description above. Unfortunately, I'm not able to. Um, one second, that's not working either. Um, pull it this up. That's what I want. Now let's see if I can. Do that, share the screen again, see what happens. And here we, no, here we don't go. We have a mystery. There is a mystery here. Adobe, it should be here, but it's not. Maybe it is. Let me have a look, see what you can see. Ah, but I can't see what you see, can see because it wouldn't come up for me. This is very peculiar. I'm afraid I'm going to have to go and have a look and see what you can see. Because I have to know that you're seeing what you need to see. And where do we have the microphone? My friend's behind the computer because I had to stand up. Yeah, voice. Thank you. Okay. Your iPad privilege is while I'm doing my lives. And then it's going to come and help us in a minute. I'm still, am I seeing what you, oh, my goodness. Play. And now maybe if we're lucky, I'll see what you're seeing. I apologize. Technology is just not working for me tonight. And you are seeing, and you are seeing, and you, no. Okay, we're going to do it differently. We're going to share, stop share, and we're going to share this. Got that on. Stop share that. I apologize, technology. God love it. 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 In theory, you're looking at this. So now we're going to go to here to the whoops. <laughs> <laughs> clicked on the wrong button. That's what we did this morning. Ah, it's not here. Right, in that case, you think you're looking at my screen. So I'm gonna go here and open this again. Put that down, save, just do it the old fashioned way, open. And I'm hoping you can see what I'm looking at. I super hope so. Let me have a look back at YouTube, at Facebook, and see if that's what you can see. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yes, I think, I hope. We've gone there, and then we've gone there, and then we've done that. Look, so I think it's hopeful. Open, and you can see what I can see. Hooray, right, good. Now. So it's the main chunk of it 
is aimed at 18 to 14 year olds for this bit here. So the idea is you either need an, a D9 dice, actually it's a C, oh yes, zero to nine dice, or you make a spinner. Make a spinner like the one in the picture over here. And we'll, uh, I'll be making one of those tonight. And the instructions for those are usually in the app. There you go, the instructions for those, but you have to print it out or just do your best guess at, at creating it. And then I just, that's just using a paper clip and a pin. And then you literally bloop, spin it. Okay, so that's how you make a spinner. I just, I have my, D, my D10, which I'm very happy to have, that we'll be using a spinner in the morning. And, or you can make the cards. So you can hand write them, or you can uh, print this out and cut them out. Either one, you can, I just dip them in, dip into a hat to get those. All right, so what we're going to do in the morning, we're going to do this activity here, which is a target of 10,000. You've got to decide where to put you're going to throw the dice or spin the, the spinner or pick five digits. And it's, you, you've got to write a digit one, in any of those, these five boxes, one, two, three, four, five. Once you've written it, you can't change it. And then just throw the dice or spin the spinner or pick a, a number five, uh, five times in all. And then you multiply those two numbers and the player with the answer closest to 10,000 is the winner. You can work collaboratively, see if together you can manage to get a number as close to 10,000 as possible. You can guess it, guess which, which number you think you might be able to come up with and just, just play, play different versions of it. And then another version is write down, write down all five numbers. So roll the dice five times Instead of placing them as you roll, place, write them all down and then place them. So you really, that is much more a game of skill that you're actually working out the number before you place it. And so there's different versions of that game and um, we'll be playing those in the morning. Then, so here's how to make the spinner. There's cards. Okay, so this is for the target game, game eight. So we've got more cards. So really, ideally, you'll be printing this out for the activity in the morning. And oh, that looks like a really cool game there. I haven't actually seen that yet. And inclusion, home learning, rounding and estimating how to win. All the games offer number skill practice and an incentive to improve the skills in order to win. So it's actually useful that this is a competitive game. It doesn't have to be competitive one against the other. You can do your personal best. And, um, but you want to do as well as you can in order to win. So chance is a big factor because you're rolling a dice or spinning a, um, a spin or picking a number out of a hat. And it's a matter of if I put this number in this box, how likely am I to get a better number for the same position on the remaining throws? Would it be better to wait or better to use the number I've got for all the different positions? And it's all about reasoning about probabilities before even hearing the word probability. It's about doing the reasoning and which, was, which is better, which is more likely, which is going to give me a better result. So for early years, we're going to play spin high and so we split, play it with two digit numbers. So they'll get one th throw it once or spin once and they'll with two digit numbers and see if they get the highest number, three digit number, which is gonna be the highest number, four digit number, lower primary, we're gonna target 50. So we're only talking tens and units up to an 100 for the answer. And then up, so that's up to, now we're up to seven year olds. And then from seven, from eight to 14 year olds, you'll be playing the game we looked at originally where you'd be, um, got five numbers and you're looking at getting as close to 10,000 as possible. And then the final kicker, upper prime, that's it. You've got different options there. Lots of, lots of maths, but maths in a fun way. So questions, can you round the number to the nearest hundred? Can you round that number to the nearest 10? 
guess using all the things that they use in class, but if you if you were to multiply by 50, how big would the other number be to get to 10,000? And also, if you rounded, it could what how would if you how could you get to 10,000 by rounding the number you've got? What would that the rounding rule have to be? And upper secondary is the target game, which we will cover in the morning. And for that, I do suggest you review this document before you play it. Again, it's a chat, nice and challenging for, for, um, for older learners. So there you go. That's what we're doing in the morning. I look forward to seeing you in the moment. Stop sharing that now. Stop sharing that. See you in the morning. If you are enjoying these lives, please do. Um, yeah, I was told Leo he was going to do something, but we're not really, hasn't really covered it. So we're not going to. So he's quite happy. He's got his iPad, his iPad time. It's very precious. And so we'll see you um, in the morning, nine o'clock for seven to 18 year olds and at 10 o'clock London time for four to seven year olds. If you do enjoy these lives, please do share them. Please tell others about them. Tell others about the group, make it fun for kids of all ages. And then um, if you are on YouTube, we do have two YouTube channels. There's a Maths Toys YouTube channel and the Bubbly Maths YouTube channel, the Maths Toys. There's videos that go with the home learning guides on the Amy High website. We, all these activities come from Amy High. We're, we're very grateful. It's a very reciprocal arrangement. We are grateful to use their amazing activities, which are so interesting for learners and enable learners to get such depth of understanding of the subjects that they might learn in school, but not necessarily understand. And then um, we help them by providing publicity because they provide really high quality professional development for teachers who teach maths in, in Africa in general. As a, most of the activities go on in South Africa, but they have um, units in other parts of Africa. And what they do is they provide bursaries for teachers who work in disadvantaged and rural areas who have a very challenging job have very dedicated teachers and these lives help them as well and they the bursaries are so that they can attend the courses at no cost to them so that's some, another way that we help them and we will be doing fundraisers on here at some point as well just so that you know uh, hopefully be interviewing some of the teachers that sort of thing see what we can come up with thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow to actually play the game thank you